Hello, BookTube, YouTube. This is Johnny. I suppose it's time to uh, make a video. It's been a while. I, you know, I watch it. I watch videos all the time. Well, not all the time. I do uh, at least once a day. I, I look at videos on YouTube, but. And I noticed I've not been making videos. It's not because I, I don't have books to show or books to talk about. I'm just, it just seems kind of absurd to make videos when we could face nuclear extinction, that Russia could destroy the human race. And uh, it seems kind of, you know, kind of crazy to talk about books when, you know, 45 million people could be annihilated in, a, you know, in a couple of minutes. But here in West Michigan, it is March the 18th, 2022. It is 6.50 in the evening, and I'm just... This is a Friday, so you can call this a Friday Reads. And uh, I haven't shown my diary in a while, or I'm on the second folder of the month. As you all know, I write in the first folder from the first of the month until the 15th. And then on the 16th of each month, I start the second folder. So we're on the 18th today, and I ended on page 275 for the year 2022 thus far, writing in my diary. I'm not writing tonight. I usually write until 3, 4 o'clock. Now, when I go down the lower level to go to bed, I have a composition notebook that I write in because I have this obsession to always being writing down my life of prayer, my life of devotion in seeking God in this uh, American wasteland. So, what have I been reading? Well, first of all, I'll show you the books I read in the mornings. Now, I know this is like a a constant rerun. I've been re I read the same things for months in the mornings. For and I'm still reading uh, Rudolph of Saxony, The Life of Jesus Christ, Part Two, Volume One, Chapters One to Fifty Seven, but Part Two, Volume Two, Chapters Fifty Eight until I don't know how many chapters comes out end of this month. So I'm almost done. Well, I am I was reading this morning on chapter... chapter 44. The Joy of the Elect as Redem Redemption Draws Near. And he was speaking on, or writing on, Matthew 24 in the Gospel of Matthew. He was uh, writing on verses 32 to 36. Now learn this parable from the fig tree when, it, when its branch has already become tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So you also, when you see all these things, know that it is near at the doors. Or surely I say to you, this generation will not by no means pass away to all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass, means pass away. And he also, it's on Mark 13. Sometimes Mark adds things that you don't find in Matthew. Let's see what 13 is. Verse 32 to 35. Uh, but that day and hour no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Take heed, watch and pray, for you do not know when the time is. It is like a man going to a far country who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to each his work and commanded the doorkeeper to watch. Watch therefore, for you do not know when the master of the house is coming in the evening, at midnight, at the crowing of the rooster, or the morning, lest coming suddenly he finds you sleeping. And what I say to you, I say to all, watch. 
So he's talking about the second coming of Christ, the end of the age, will be the great tribulation, you know, so you, you know, so that's how I was reading on this morning, Rudolph of Saxony. And I'm still reading Reform Systematic Theology, Spirit and Salvation. I'm on page 751, the indwelling, leading, and filling of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Life, the Spirit of Christ. And then I ended on the leading of the Holy Spirit, the promise of those spirits leading. So I've been reading this in the morning. I, I read Rudolf of Saxony one morning, and then I try to read the next morning Reform Systematic Theology. So I've been reading those pretty consistently for last year into this year. Now, my wife and I, we went to Grand Rapids, which is east of us, about 25 miles. We went to bookstores. I think it was Wednesday. The weather was nice, and we drove over there, and we visited Baker Bookhouse. And I bought two books of Baker Bookhouse, The Passions of Christ, The Emotional Life of Jesus and the Gospels by F. Scott Spencer. As you all know, I'm interested in the humanity of Jesus Christ. Not only that was he the Son of God, the second person of the Trinity, but he was Jesus of Nazareth. He had an emotional life because he was fully human and fully divine. So it goes into his uh, the passions of Christ. And then I bought at Baker Bookhouse this book, The Hope of the Early Church, the Handbook of Patristic Eschatology. This is by Brian E. Daly. Daly, Daly. I already have, he did this book in my library where he translated The Light on the Mountain, Greek Patristic and Banzantine Homilies on the Transfiguration of the Lord, translated by Brian D. Daly. He's a patristic scholar and this is what the, uh, the early fathers spoke on eschatology, on death, resurrection, judgment, things like that. And then we went to Reform Heritage Books, where, where Dr. Beakey, he started this publishing company, him and some other people. And I bought these two books at Reform Heritage Books. This is a Puritan reprint. This is a commentary on the Epistle to the Ephesians by the Puritan Paul Bain. This is the complete commentary in the, in the Ephesians. This is a reprint of, it was first published in the 19th century. This is a photocopy, a Xerox photocopy of that text. And then I bought this dissertation, The Beginnings of American Theology, John Cotton, Thomas Hooker, Thomas Shepard, and Peter Buckley by James William Jones. It's only cost me seven dollars, but and it's on the beginnings of American theology, and I'm interested in those things. <laughs> as far as what I've been reading, also in the mornings, I've been I showed you this book, Jonathan Edwards' Pastor, Religion and Society in 18th Century Northampton by Patricia J. Tracely. I read today. I volunteered at the Book Nook, the library used bookstore, and I read this for this morning. So that's why I've been reading, and then as far as secular books for Friday Reads, I showed you this book I got in the mail a couple weeks ago, Love's Attraction, a novel by David Adams Cleveland. Uh, I've been reading this uh, pretty steadily. I've read, uh, how many pages have I read? 153. I pre-ordered his next novel. He's only written a couple of novels. He's main. He he's an, he's a art historian, so he's written books on art history. And yeah, it says in the back here. He is a novelist and art historian. Lives in New York City. David Adams Cleveland. And uh, so I've been reading this. And I also have been reading a, a memoir by Mark 
Lanigan, who just died recently. He was a, uh, was a star of the band The Screaming Trees. And then he did many solo albums, and then he did collaborations. And he just died just recently. And I just thought you know, I'd show you my Mark Lanigan collection. <laughs> he, he started a rock group with uh, Greg Doulis of the Afghan Wigs, and it was called the Gutter Twins. Then he only put out one album, Cerulea. Uh, Mark Langdon is the, not that over there is Mark Langdon. Over there is Greg Doulis of Afghan Wigs. So Mark Lanigan put out, band put out this album, Phantom Radio. And then he put out an earlier album, Whiskey for the Holy Ghost by Mark Lanigan. And then he, this is when he, when he was in the Screaming Trees, this is a ocean of confusion. It's kind of like essential tracks of their, I think they put out seven albums. This is a Screaming Trees album, Dust. It's kind of grunge rock. And then Mark Lanigan put out this album, Here Comes the Weird Chill. And then Mark Lanigan did I'll Take Care of You by Mark Lanigan. This is his, one of his first albums, The Winding Sheet by Mark Lanigan, when he was really young. And then he did two albums with uh, Isabel Campbell. Uh, Sunday at the Devil's Dirt and Ballad of the Broken Seas. She, she did. He did an album with her. I, f I forgot what group she was in. I, my mind just went blank. But they put out. Also, I have an EP with Isabel and Mark Lanigan, Ramblin' Man. And then he put out this album, Blues Funeral, by Mark Lanigan Band. And then he did an album with a group, I think it's one of a kind, Soul Savers. Uh, it's not how far you fall, it's how the way you land. It's like a collaboration. So I've always been into music of Mark Lanigan. I think I saw the Screaming Trees many, many years ago, but I, I'm not going to swear on that. So I've been reading his memoirs, Sing Backwards and Weep, a memoir by Mark Lanigan. So that's my Friday reads, not much else, uh, like I'm writing in my diary. I'm doing my physical therapy for my sciatica. I have my last two sessions next week. That'll make five and six. Uh, I so I'm not really guaranteeing that I'm doing any better, but I'm doing my exercises. I'm doing my. I'm walking. I'm praying for healing. <laughs> so that's my kind of life. It's like I said, I'm kind of freaked out about the war in Afghanistan. Not Afghanistan. Well, I was freaked out about that. Now in Ukraine. So I just have to pray all the time to keep my eyes on Jesus. That I know that Jesus is the King of Glory and He's ruling the heavens and the earth and He's going to come back and bring in the, the new creation, the kingdom of glory. And I do, every day I just pray, Lord, strengthen my faith. Keep my eyes on you. Wait, like it says there in Mark, watch. We do not know the hour of his coming. And so it's time to pursue after Christ, pursue after obedience and holiness and trust in the Lord that he has everything under control, even though it looks like he doesn't. So yeah, I'm really enjoying reading Love's Attraction. I read that at night and I read Mark Lanigan and I read other things. So, and like I said, I usually read in the mornings into the afternoons and in the afternoons I read whatever strikes me. Uh, Jonathan Edwards, Pastor, I've been reading that. But I also have been reading 
some of the commentary in Ephesians. I was reading uh, the first couple of verses, his commentary on Ephesians chapter 1. I was looking at those. Well, first, I, one of my favorite chapters in Ephesians is chapter 5. And when I got the commentary, I read on the first couple of verses of Ephesians 5, verses 1 and 2. Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for an offering, a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. So I read Paul Bain's commentary on that. And then I was reading yesterday his commentary on Ephesians chapter 1, verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints who are in Ephesus and faithful in Christ Jesus, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So those are the kind of things I read when I'm not writing in my diary, when I'm not praying, when I'm not freaking out about a nuclear war. And when I'm not, you know, my wife and I, we have devotions. We read New Morning Mercies by Paul Trapp in the mornings. And I don't want, we don't watch TV. We don't go to movies. I, I can't listen. To, well, I've been listening to music off and on. A little bit of Mark Lanigan. Some classical music when I do my exercises. I got me a yoga mat. Mat. So I've been doing that. So besides that, you know, I'm still anxious. I still get my bad days and good days. I look at every day as a day of prayer. That's what I do. I get up every day. I live a I live a, I, I realize I can only live in this world by living in constant communion and prayer with the risen Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the only way I can live in this world is keep my eyes on Jesus. Stay before the throne of grace to pray. Pray for Ukraine. Pray for the Russians. Pray for America. Pray for humanity. Pray for the church. The Christians are being bombed there in Ukraine. You know, our, the church my wife goes to supports missionaries and ministers in Ukraine. And... Uh, so anyway, I hope you're all doing well. I do hope you're having a good reading experiences. You know, one thing, I rarely have any bad reading experiences because most of the time, I say, I do a lot of research in reading about books, the books that I read. I just don't pick up a book unless I know something about it or I read about the, the writer or, or read reviews or something. So I usually have a, a very good reading life. I really enjoy what I read. I enjoy going in and out of books, different worlds, different realities. And uh, like you read Mark Lanigan, <laughs> and then you read Light on the Mountain. Two different worlds. Sorry. You read the, Jonathan Edwards as a pastor in, in 18th century Massachusetts, and then you read about... Uh, patristic eschatology, or you read about the passions of Christ, or reformed systematic theology, or medieval mysticism. You just go in and out of these worlds as you read, and as you write, and as you think, and as you pray. So I'm just rambling because I just want to say hi. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for the new subscribers. Do pray that you're all doing well. We're going to have an upsurge in the COVID uh, plague it sounds like and so be careful so once again I hope you're all doing well you're in my prayers and until next time bye